Placement of a central venous catheter is an essential technique in the treatment of many hospitals. The placement of a central venous catheter is an essential technique in the treatment of many hospitalized patients. With this video, we will demonstrate the placement of a central venous catheter into the internal jugular vein with the use of several variations of the Seldinger technique under ultrasound guidance. We will demonstrate and review the regional anatomy of the neck. Indications for insertion of a central line. The recommended site and technique for placement of an internal jugular line. Complications of the procedure and suggestions how to avoid them. In order to review the anatomy of the neck, we should remember that the internal jugular vein can be found at the apex of the triangle, formed by the sternal and clavicular heads of the sternocleidomastoidian muscle. Identify the triangle formed by the sternal and clavicular heads of the muscle and the clavicle and determine the location of the carotid pulse. The vein runs lateral to the carotid artery and our insertion point should be at the apex of this triangle aiming towards the ipsilateral nipple. Placement of a central line is indicated for monitoring central venous pressure, delivery of critical or caustic medication, emergency resuscitation and hemodialysis. There are a few contraindications as well, such as infection of the overlying area, thrombosis of the vein and coagulopathy which is a relative contraindication, but we should be aware of any coagulation problems in order to avoid any complications. There are two ways of inserting a central line. A landmark technique, which involves a good knowledge of the neck anatomy, and the ultrasound technique, which can be in plane, standard of care nowadays, and out of plane. Before proceeding with the procedure, always explain it to the patient by pointing out advantages and disadvantages covering the most common complications. Obtain the patient's consent, either verbal or in writing if needed. Check for any contraindication by assessing the patient appropriately and by checking the notes. And always locate the landmarks. Once all legal consents are done, start preparing and checking your equipment. You can start with preparing any additional equipment, as sterile sleeve for the ultrasound, a sterile jelly, extra chlorhexidine stick, eleven blade scalpel, such a most used one. It's two zero coated vicryl. We will need as well normal saline for flushing our catheter. One or two percent lidocaine if the patient is awake and you will need to use some local anesthetic. Proceed with checking your prepare kits, such as checking the integrity and the expired date of your sets. Check the pack of the central venous catheter, the integrity of it, and if it's the size you intend to use. To assure the highest level of sterility, the operator should wear a sterile gown, gloves, surgical cap, mask and face shield, and open the equipment presented into a sterile manner. When undertaking such a procedure which involves shafts, the operator must exercise extreme care and be very organized on the trolley. In this video, we will place all our shafts into the tray provided with the kit. If you have an assistant, for the procedure. This one have to maintain the serenity and stop you immediately during the procedure if anything will be contaminated. Always arrange your equipment on the trolley.
in the order you're going to use. And place your shelves into the tray. When handed by your assistant, all equipment must be checked by yourself as well, as in the end, you are going to be responsible for everything you're going to use. For example, when drawing normal saline, always check the ample and verbally confirm the expired date. Do the same with the local anaesthetic as well. Check the ample and the expired date. Extreme caution might be undertaken when drawing it, as not to injure your assistant. Extreme care must be taken when using local anaesthetic and normal saline, not to mix the syringes. In order to avoid this, in this case, we will leave the needle attached to the syringe with local anaesthetic. When opening the central venous catheter kit, take your equipment one by one and arrange your shelves into the tray in order to maintain a sterile procedure and to have a second opportunity in checking your equipment again. Now that everything is handy, you should start checking your guide wire. Remove the cap protection and make sure it's easy to withdraw. Then check the catheter, avoiding to touch the tip of the catheter. Remove all caps and using normal saline, we should flush all the ports and watch for the saline coming through the holes at the end of the catheter. Once all flushed, all the pores should be clamped. A part of the longer lumen, which is the brown end, the pore through which our guide wire is going to come out through. Prepare the patient by placing the bed 15 to 30 degrees Trandelberg position to decrease the risk of air embolism. Turn the patient's head opposite to the procedure site. Prepare the area by scrubbing or spray with chlorhexidine for more than 30 seconds. Let it dry and drape the site. Make sure you include all landmarks into the sterile field. 